Hi everybody, my name is Eric Tonsmeyer and I'm going to walk you through a little bit about how to use the new IPCC Regional Atlas. It's a very powerful tool um, to help you find out what climate change is has brought and is projected to bring for your region or for any region of the world. So let's see so just um briefly to begin um uh this is where you can find the atlas interactive dash atlas dot ipcc dot ch um it is a very detailed tool and we'll look at some there's a sort of simpler and more advanced ways to use it um and what do you do with this tool well first of all you can learn about what is happening and will happen where you live or for any part of the world um, you can um, print out and download copies of that if you need, um, and it's a great thing to bring to your community um, uh, climate activist groups. It's a great thing, great thing to bring to schools. It's a great thing to bring to your policymakers, whether at the national level to sort of point out why this is important, or even really in your town or city um, to talk about what kinds of climate change adaptation are needed. So this is a tool for looking at why do we need to mitigate climate change? Why do we need to prevent catastrophic climate change? Why do we need to reduce emissions and so on? But also what's happening and what's going to happen and what do we need to do to be ready for that? Because a certain amount of it is unavoidable even in the best case scenario and we're not at all headed for those good scenarios right now. Um, so, um, and honestly, it's useful for climate grief as well to just sort of sit there and take a look at what is happening in places you care about and what will happen, how much worse it will get in places you care about um, to help um, cleanse the palate of your mind so you can move on and, and, um, and move into action from, um, from grief. So, so I've got this site called up here. And uh, the first thing that we're gonna do moment here. Great. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is click on this regional synthesis. Oh, there's a fun little tool here. There's this little um, globe that spins around and you can look at it for temperature and precipitation at different levels of warming. That's kind of fun. But we'll start with the regional synthesis. This is kind of the simple one. And if you look over here, we have map regions and combinations. Map is the simplest one. It gives you these very simple breakdowns of, of the world in chunks is the way the IPCC thinks about them. Um, so here's like Eastern North America, here's West Africa and so on. So you can say, show me extreme heat for this part of the world. And you can see that the IPCC is confident with this dark purple color um, that everywhere except Antarctica is we are high a high confidence in the increase of extreme heat oh, or you can look at frost guess what we're going to see less frost in most parts of the world um, what about severe wind storms here are places where we think they're going to be more severe wind storms um, uh, <laughs> We don't know much about hail. Not don't see much change in hail. I guess. How about uh, you know tropical sandstorm, tropical cyclones, sand and dust storms, agricultural and ecological droughts, on and on. So this gives you that kind of global picture here. You can also kind of the flip way. Oh, or you can look. These are what's projected in the future. You can also look for past trends. What have we seen for agricultural and ecological drought in the last period of time and the last couple of decades or whatever in these regions? So you can see what's already happened from climate change. Now we'll go from map to regions. And here you can pick whatever part of the world you want. Here's West Siberia. Um, high confidence of increase of mean air temperature, high confidence of increase in extreme heat, confidence of decrease in cold spells, and so on. So we can see in one place everything the IPCC thinks is, is, um, is projected to, um, to happen for that particular region, in this case, again, West Siberia, but you can look uh, here, Southeastern Africa, so you get these nice um, 
nice documents right here. And then you can share those, share the link or put it on Twitter or whatever you like there. Um, so that's a great way to get a little summary, a simple summary. Uh, and then we have these combinations, which is kind of cool. You can say, show me, you know, drought and these these um, hexagons are the same um, map units, the same regions, you know, Western Siberia, whatever. Show me drought plus extreme heat plus flooding. Uh, and it shows you what each of those looks like. So you can sort of get a look at the world and what's happening when you combine multiple issues at the same time, which is, I think, a very helpful tool. Um, to have there. So this is the basic one, the regional synthesis, which is super useful tool. But now let's take a look just briefly at some of the more um, uh, uh, powerful tools that we have here as well from IPCC. I'm very grateful to them for putting all this together. Here's the regional information um, tool, which gives you more sort of like nuanced variation. So the first thing, um, well, you can set what your regions are, but that's not so important for this one. First, you choose what model do you want? Do you want projections of the future? Do you want models of the past? Do you want models of the like ancient past? We're gonna look at model projections. Um, that is projections for the future. And this CMIP6 is kind of the going standard right now. So we're gonna use that which is what's preset when you walk in the door. Then over here, we have variable. You can choose one variable. Like, let's look at um, a number of days above 35 degrees Celsius, which is like around 90 degrees hot days, number of hot days, additional number of hot days above and beyond what we have now. Um, so you can see that's getting hotter. But now we can come over here and we can say, that this is with two degrees of warming. What does that look like with four degrees of warming? It shows us how many more hot days there are a year. Um, so you can play with those. It, you can say what you want that compared to. Uh, and also over here on scenario, you can choose different scenarios and see how they'll play out in, in the short term, medium term, or long term. And I'll show you what those scenarios look like uh, I've gone it it, um, it gives us four scenarios and uh, here they are one of them is um, the 2.6 is sustainability taking the green road which gets us to 1.7 degrees not quite where we want to be but close uh, 4.5 is kind of where we're headed right now in terms of commitments and stuff 2.7 degrees uh, the the seven point is um, countries compete with each other and things get ugly, so there's not much cooperation um, and emissions continue. And then uh, eight point five is the sort of full on we're all in with fossil fuels kind of scenario. So here, let's choose the middle of the road scenario, which is the um, two dash four point five, and we can see in the near term, we get some additional days of warming, um, but by end of century, we have a lot of extra days that are gonna be that hot. Um, we can also play with what time of year you want, if you'd like to do that. Um, you can do different projections on the map. You can have a look, um, let's see, look at it from the North Pole or from the South Pole or what have you. So those are kind of fun. Um, and uh, let's see, there are some other fun things you can do in here. You can, uh, using this point information on the right there, you can narrow in on a specific city or particular area if you want detail. Of course, you can zoom on here as well if you wanna get um, as much regional detail as this particular map will give you. Um, and then you can, um, uh, you can download these. Uh, which is really fun. Uh, you can get a, a copy to um, uh, to print out if you like. And then there's a way, we'll see if I can remember it here. Um, I don't think this is it. Now I'm forgetting, but there's a way anyway on here where you can get it to show you the, the chart. So it'll show you the actual, oh, no, that is not what I wanted. 
Sorry there, I believe this might, no. There is a way, and I'm afraid I'm forgetting it right now, but you can um, you can take a look in here anyway and see, uh, play around with it a little bit, and you can get graphs and stuff that show how your region will change over time as well. So I think this is a really powerful um, set of tools over here that can give us a lot to, to work with. Um, and um, I recommend that you check it out and take a look and use it as a tool for your own planning, for your own organizing. Um, and get it out there as widely as possible. I find again and again that people have not really taken a square look at what's happening in their part of the world and what, what has happened and what's going to happen. And this is a wonderful tool for doing so. So thanks very much, everybody.